Well, for the purpose of exactly what uh, what we're praying for uh, in the relief in the, in the, in the petition, that uh, the overcrowdedness be rectified, that uh, the the hole, so to speak, which quote unquote be eliminated, that uh, there be increased facilities uh, as far as the inmates are concerned, that recreational areas not necessarily, I don't mean turn it into a country club, but where you get a little exercise, uh, be approved, that uh, when somebody comes to visit them, that there's some degree of privacy, not, you know, obviously we're running a jail, but we don't, again, no country club. Uh, this is nothing new to Dallas County. As a matter of fact, since 1958, there have been sundry committees reporting and making reports, even now. The Council of Governments is, uh, is uh, having a computerized investigation as to exactly what type of facility is needed, whether a regional jail is needed or whether to reopen the old Dallas County Jail. But uh, admittedly by everybody, it's, it's overcrowded. And with all the attendant uh, problems that go with over, overcrowdedness, that you have to delegate to a prisoner uh, to watch over his or the inmates, this creates some sort of a, of a click in there which isn't healthy at all. I think this is a matter of very great benefit to the world as a whole and to the future of the United States that uh, th th this country with 800 million people is now going to come and sit down and has to answer and argue and justify and uh, explain. Uh, but this, this will is, they? This is a, yes, uh, well, they've got to if they come and sit down. They can't, they can't uh, when they come and sit down at the table, they've got to speak and they've got to answer. I feel it's a very great advantage to have um, speaking represented rather than in dangerous isolation, taking its decisions on its own without any consultation with anyone. Uh, this is a great move forward, and it's done by the United States. Uh, and now you've had a concentration on this secondary issue, which is a secondary issue, because, as you know, the only thing that Peking and Taiwan agreed on was that they both claimed to represent the whole of China. If they weren't asking to represent Taiwan separately, uh, they claimed, and they still claim, and after the vote they claimed that they represent uh, those who came from uh, Taiwan, uh, who are Chiang Kai-shek men, claimed that they represent the whole of China. So it was a simple decision. The court order requires that we submit a report on November the 1st and March the 1st. We have submitted the facts in the case. We have done our best to implement uh, not only the letter but the spirit of the order. It's up to the judge to determine whether or not uh, the extent to which it's been successful. Are you personally pleased with it, Judge? I have no comments at this point with regard to anything relating to the court order. Well, certainly, uh, if we have any more, it would be harmful to the school system as such. Uh, you see, we feel that the educational program is for the people who live in Fort Worth. And to make this even more tedious, uh, uh, if we think that we have complied with the law. We have done, we've acted in good faith. We have done everything we have done in the face of all the criticism we've received to try to have a good educational program. We think we have complied with the court order. We've kept faith with both the whites and the blacks. We have not made the whites or blacks do the, have the majority of traveling. And it's working. It's very successful, although we've had some white people leave. But when you consider the tremendous number, I don't think that, I think that the city of Fort Worth will remain static. We won't lose anymore. I, I think that our attorneys told the judges some very important things. The in, whereas the Fort Worth Public Schools and the city of Fort Worth is trying to dismantle the dual system, which was the one that was against the law. We believe the NAACP is trying to dismantle the city. Operating engineers of local Union 819 at Fort Worth continue to picket a construction site at the regional airport despite charges that the strike is illegal. The strikers, or picketers, have left for the day. The Fort Worth local claims that B&J Excavation Company of Dallas does not have a working agreement with Local 819 to perform the job. The equipment of B&J was idle today, but they claim it was not because of the picketer, only because of the wet ground. B&J employs workers of Local 714 in Dallas and is a subcontractor to Manhattan Construction of Dallas. Their contract is for the $21.5 million power plant at the airport. Manhattan 
has agreements with both Dallas and Fort Worth locals, and that company has filed a complaint with the National Labor Relations Board claiming the pickets represent unfair labor, labor practices. The spokesman for Manhattan, Jerry Self, told me that a working agreement with Local 819 is not necessary, according to the International Operating Engineers Union. Self claims the Dallas union members only have to check in with the Fort Worth local when reporting to the, their job. This eliminates the benefits that the Fort Worth local might receive, which apparently is the major objection. Joe Harris of the Labor Relations Board is investigating the dispute. If the work stoppage is illegal, an injunction will be issued possibly tomorrow morning to stop the picketing. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the move at the Dallas-Fort Worth Regional Airport site. I don't think there's any change in the trend at all so far as the intensity of deception in the marketplace. I think what we are finding out is that we are learning more about deception in the marketplace. Uh, the consuming public is reporting to the Federal Trade Commission what is happening, and the agency is taking and playing a more active and vigorous role in combating deception in the marketplace. And what major steps are you taking? Well, there's been a complete structural reorganization of the Federal Trade Commission. A great deal of the responsibilities and authority for coming to grips with these problems uh, have been given to the regional offices. Uh, we are playing a far more active role in developing input, uh, moving faster on cases. Uh, we are selecting our cases uh, uh, in a much better fashion than heretofore, coming to grips with real problems of real market significance. Let's say you're out zipping along the turnpike one sunny afternoon in your little GT whatever, doing about 80 miles an hour. All of a sudden, from a white box on the side of the road, a dull red flash emits. You think nothing of it, but a few days later, you receive a citation through the mail that says you were doing about 80 miles an hour. Well, you've been had by Orbis, and if a proposal received by the turnpike authority this morning is put into effect, Orbis will be along the road on the Dallas-Fort Worth Turnpike. The presentation was made by Dick Myers of LTV. LTV builds Orbis 3, which is a speed control device. Myers told the Turnpike Authority about the advantages of slowing down the fast drivers, speeding up the slow ones, and generally keeping traffic in a correct medium speed range. What happens is that Orbis takes your picture. It records not only your face, but the license plate on your car. It can do this during the day or at night with its electronic flash unit. It's supposed to be completely safe. The driver knows he's being photographed, but he's not distracted from his driving. Myers says that on Spur 303 here in Arlington, where the system was first put into effect, traffic incidents of speeding have dropped from 240 when the system was per first put into effect down to about 20 a day now. The Turnpike Authority took the proposal under advisement. The cost is no great factor. It's about $85,000 a year, or in other words, about what it would cost to put one patrolman full-time, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, on the Turnpike in a ra radar-equipped patrol car. The problem is public receptance. The problem is people who pay to drive on the Turnpike really may not want their actions monitored by a Big Brother device. But the fact is this, that turnpike accidents have been killing people every year. If the authority feels that the accidents can be reduced, thus lives may be saved, then they may consider the system, Orbis 3, an important one in speed control on the turnpike. Whatever happens, if Orbis 3 is put on there, brother, you'll know that your big brother is watching you. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the move, for 303 in Arlington.
Do you feel as many Americans do now that this is the beginning of the end for the United Nations? No, I, I think exactly the opposite. I think that this is the beginning of a new era for the United Nations, which will be far more effective than it's ever been before, for the simple reason that uh, a quarter of the world's population, which is not now represented in the United Nations, in future will be represented. And uh, I would say that on the great issues of disarmament and development and uh, the great racial issues of the world, you can't deal with them without uh, a quarter of the population, uh, with uh, the whole of the Chinese nation in, in dangerous isolation. But wasn't the issue, sir, the expulsion of nationalist China in order to bring red China in? Why would, in your analysis, say your country, Israel, other countries aligned with the United States, vote for this, knowing the United States was opposed? Well, we have to make up our own minds, uh, uh, and uh, we make our position very clear to, to the United States. And um, the, all European countries, all Scandinavian countries, Canada, as you say, Israel, and India, Iran, um, 76 nations felt differently, very strongly differently from the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we've got a right, naturally, to, to come to our own conclusions and state our own position.